Welcome to this segment of Beard of Whiskey. I'm your host, Russ Heaps, and as always, we're coming to you from the Beard of Whiskey studios, high atop Barley's Tap Room on Main Street in downtown Greenville, South Carolina. It's beer headquarters of the upstate in Carolina. And this is one of our uh, Beer 101 episodes where I get my buddy Big John Richards uh, <laughs> to sort of give us a little tutorial uh, in, uh, on beer. And it's really one of the favorite things for me to do uh, because I don't even have to pretend like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I just sit back and let him go. So it, it's, a, it's a great thing. But before we get into the meat of it, um, Big John, what do we want them to do? We want them to like us, Russ. We want them to like us a lot, or at least just once when you click on the like button. That's, yeah. and, then, and subscribe, so two things. Yeah, and, and once you subscribe, <laughs> you only have to do that once. So it's, it's a wonderful thing, too. Thumbs up, down below, like. At the end of the video, there, you have an opportunity to click on some other videos if you, if you want to watch a little more. Or there's a round Beard of Whiskey icon. You can click on that, and you'll be all subscribed. And a new video comes out every Thursday at noon, East Coast time. And with that, what are we doing, John? Why do well, we have four beers here? Because we're going to talk about the difference between ales and lagers. All right. Because we've uh, gotten some requests for that. It's one of the top questions I get is how many different kinds of beers are there? And in the largest umbrella sense of the word, there are only two kinds of beer. And it's determined by the yeast, the kind of yeast that's used to ferment it. Brewers are fond of saying that brewers create wort, which is the, the fermentable side, and yeast creates beer. Because we can't do it without the yeast. So basically what happens when you're fermenting beer, so you create um, this liquid created from barley and other grains that's got some fermentable sugars in it, and then we throw yeast in there, and yeast is a little living one-celled organism that jumps down in there and starts to work and uh, eats up all the fermentable sugars and spits out alcohol and CO2. Two of our favorite things about beer. <laughs> they're, like, they're like honeybees. Right, of. they're like honeybees, like honeybees, but they're only single cells, so they're really hard to watch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but they are fun to, fun to experience the, uh, the after effects. So uh, the big difference is ale yeast ferments a lot more quickly at warmer temperatures on top of the beer as it's fermenting. So if you're ever watching it in a, in a uh, brewery, you'll see this kind of pancake batter stuff floating on top of the beer, and that's actually the yeast that's gotten tired and decided it doesn't want any more sugar. <laughs> and it's yeah, full. It's full. It's done. That's it. We're, we're out. Um, time to go home, get a taxi, get an Uber. <laughs> uh, lager yeast is called bottom fermenting yeast because once it's tired, it sinks to the bottom of the vessel and you can't see it anymore you just see the beer on top so uh and there you pull them out a little different ways but that's neither here nor there that's minutia we don't need to, we <coughs> all don't right need to we don't need to get minutia. that far we don't need to get that far what most people don't do what most people really mistake however is they think that lagers are always light and ales are always dark and so our little fun experiment for everyone at home is to Look at all four of these beers. Two of them are one beer, and two of them are a different beer. Yes. And this see if and you this can. And that and that. Yeah. Th no, these are the same, and these. Are the same. We'll get it figured out. <laughs> I don't. Know. I, that's why I don't participate in this thing. I can't. I can't even get that right. So your your quest at home was to try and figure out which one of these is the lager and which one's the ale, because it really has nothing to do with color. It really has nothing to do with body or alcohol strength or anything else. It is simply whether or not the beer ferments at cold temperatures or at warm temperatures. And just to kill the suspense of the whole arrangement. <laughs> I, I'm on the edge of my seat. I... The one beer, the one uh, Russ has been sipping here is an Imperial Stout. And the one we have in the middle here is uh, called a Baltic Porter, which despite the t title Porter, is actually a lager. So this is an ale. And this one's an ale. Okay. Right. So uh, the Baltic Porter is a style that originated in the Baltic states. You'd be surprised, unsurprised to find out. And it's uh, naturally cold fermented, so the lager yeast is the only one that would really do it because they were fermenting where it was cold. So they created a beer that was trying to mimic the imperial stouts they were getting from England and 
various and sundry and created Baltic Porter essentially in its place. So we're drinking a couple of these and I'm going to take a sip now before I really get, before I really get to going. <laughs> I've, I've had a couple of sips, so I'm right. already going. Right. Texamus. So. Ballast point. Yeah. Ballast point. <laughs> do they ever do anything wrong? Uh, I, I'm sure they do, but I've never found. No, they, they're pretty good at what they do. Jeez. They are really good at what they do. That's, cool. That's for sure. And it, it is, continues to be pretty amazing what you can do with a billion dollars. I know. I know. <laughs> I've, gotten you, I've gotten you off point. Yeah. There, no, sorry. that's okay. That's all right. So we're going to talk a little bit about the fermentation process. Okay. Before we, get, uh, before we get to where we're going, I guess. You might want to pause this and go get a beer because... You well, it, it watch helps, this without, right? I should why, watch this without. Why a would you anyway. be doing that anyway? I know, I know. <laughs> so, uh, yeast, obviously. So we have the German purity law, of which is actually the Bavarian purity law of uh, 1512. 1512 sounds right. Um, but they, the, there technically were three ingredients that you were allowed to make beer with: water, hops, and barley. And uh, they didn't obviously include yeast because nobody knew what it was. Right. Uh, we just knew that there was some happy accident that happened when you put beer into a glass and, and then, uh, you know, did something. Any number of things that we've accumulated over the years. There's stories that we've found of uh, certain cultures in the Middle Ages who literally kept what they called a magic stick. And they would... <laughs> and I'm not kidding about that. <laughs> So, they, many, so many ways this could I go. I could go not, in fun directions. And we're not they literally it. had, that one of the town elders had a, the, the magic stick, and they would ferment the beer as a town, and it would create this pancake, -y, pancake batter thing on top of the beer, and when that happened, they would come and stick the magic stick in it, take it away, and of course it would carry some of the yeast away with it. And when uh, they got ready to brew the next beer, they would bring the magic stick back and stick it in the beer, and that yeast would then start its work again and get going. And then there's the yeast and whatnot that lives in all the air everywhere. But right. they literally believed that the stick was magical and that it created whatever this beverage was, and they had to poke it with the stick to make it work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there's, no getting, there's no getting past that one. <laughs> Okay. Uh oh, Russ is switching beers. <laughs> All the way up till when we uh, really discovered, and it's another beer save the world moment, uh, Louis Pasteur of pasteurization fame um, was actually his first book was called Etudes sur la Beer, uh, which was a sort of treatise on the methods of controlling and uh, preventing beer spoilage. See, before this, did you know that Louis Pasteur was an alcoholic? Yeah. No, you did not. That's right. See, this is all new ground. <laughs> so really and truly, his, his original work in microbiology as the first dude doing it was trying to figure out why beer went bad. And I think that's a noble. <laughs> that's a noble a, pursuit. Yes. We have yes. him to thank for a lot of things going on. <laughs> yes. Good for him. So uh, finding I'm, I'm out what... I'm seeing him in a whole new light. Right, actually. exactly. Finding out what was going on with, with this microorganism actually helps us create what we have today, which is why we have the greatest time history of mankind to be a beer drinker. But getting back to what yeast actually does, as it goes in there, like I said, as the brew, as the brew process goes on, we're creating the fermentable sugars, we're sending it over to the boil kettle, we're sanitizing it when we boil and adding our hops in, create some of the other flavors. And then when we send it over to fermentation, the yeast eats up all the oxygen, it eats up all the fermentable sugars, and then happily goes to sleep. Meanwhile, it's spit out all the alcohol. Most breweries then force carbonate their beers, that's a different story. And, uh, and then we come out with this guy. So the big difference coming out of it, uh, if we want to get into once we hit that fermentation process, lager yeast is just going to, it's going to ferment colder and then take a lot longer. So an ale, you might, if you were home brewing, you might get done with your fermentation process in a five gallon batch in three, four days. 
Um, if you were brewing a lager, it might take you two or three weeks. And you're going to ferment that lager at like 40 degrees versus fermenting your ale at like 65 degrees, 70, depending on what you're trying to do with it. Right. So lager, lager is actually the German word for store, to store. So the whole idea is you've created this beer and now you go store it somewhere because you have to wait for it too. So we use the term lager to per refer to the process of storing that beer while we're waiting for it to mature. Okay. So you're going to take a lager, it's going to take that couple of weeks to ferment, then you're going to go stick it off to the side after it's already done in your little sealed bottle and you're going to have to wait another month for it to be ready to go because it's going to take some time to, to let some of this lager yeast create some fun and interesting little flavors as it goes, as all yeast does. But with lagers, they're so, they're, they're usually quite a bit more deliberate than an ale. An ale is going to have a lot more subtle things going on, a, a broader range of flavors, and some of them coming directly from the yeast. In a lager, you essentially don't want any of the yeast flavors in there. They're going to create like flavors of green apple skins and band-aids and marshmallows and some things that just don't belong to bait. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> some banana stuff that typically just doesn't belong around. Whereas in an ale, plenty you can have all those flavors, minus the Band-Aid. Right. <laughs> and it's, and it's going to be okay. Uh, with a lager, you're going to get fewer but more distinct flavors in the profile. With an ale, you're going to get more, sub, more subtle things going on. So... When we, stick our, when we stick our lager off to lager, we're waiting for those flavors to sort of mellow out. So we call it a cold maturation process, uh, we call it lagering, we call it all kinds of fun things. Um, but there's a, there's a reason, and that's the big reason uh, a lot of craft breweries have shied away from doing lagers and do mostly ales, is that they're so much quicker to get to you so if you have a little small scale brewery and you have three fermenters, you, you can't a, take up get... one of them for a month with right. one beer. Right. So you have to get that beer out of there. So you have to try something. You're, you're going to yep. be brewing a lot more ales and getting them out to your people a lot faster. Um, we're starting to see a little bit of that trend changing. It's just, especially as some of our local brewers get a little bigger, we sure. have a little more room to, to do things. But uh, and then the the uh, demand is just there. You know, we're we're moving. We're moving away from these big 10 and 11 and 12 percent beers um, into the world of five and six percent beers that are flavorful and fun to drink, but are uh, are a little more. Oh, um, everybody has to say drink responsible now, kiddos. So, <laughs> as as we are. Right, clearly. As we are. Uh, setting a good example here in in beer whiskey studios. Yes. Well, right. you know we're we're. Do as we say, not as we do. Right. It's, the, it's, it's, our, it's almost our motto. Yeah, almost. Almost. Spreading the gospel of good, good taste is really our motto. Right. But, uh, uh, do we, as we, we say, pick a couple not, of sub-mottos as yeah. we go. Do as we say, not as we do is right. the other one. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, getting back to talking ale, you know, ales and lagers, with ales switching sides, you're going to have that that more uh, sort of vicious, if you will, fast fermentation, top fermentation, and you're going to turn into a much more typically full-bodied, full-flavored beer versus your, your typically, like, and deliberate is the best word I've been able to come up with here recently to talk about the difference. You're going to have a little bit more play with this guy. It's a little all over the place. As you drink it, it's going to change quite a bit more than you will with the lager uh, as it warms. And you're going to have a lot of flavors from all the different arrangements, all the different ingredients that will shine, that will shine in an ale that right. would not be as prominent right. in a lager. You can end up with very similar things, but they're going to be, you know, subtly different in, in some fun ways. Um, I don't know. Stump the teacher time, Russ. Well, I if if I had if I knew enough about what you were talking about, I could <laughs> stump the teacher. I would do that, but no. Um, anything else we should know? In, in I the mean, I, I feel like I've, ale? I feel like I've rambled a lot. 
Well, that's, you know, we're... I could talk about open fermentation. No, I don't think so. Okay. I don't... <laughs> I'm doing you a favor. Right. <laughs> so we're, we're on a Big John in 20 segment here. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, really, is there anything else that we, we really need to know? I think the, I mean, we can do a little, little overview, a little wrap up. So you're supposed to, when you teach, you're supposed to say, well, here's what I'm going to teach you. And then teach and then say, here's what I taught you. I okay, that's what well, they say. what so what'd you teach us? In the, in the final know, analysis, we made it, since you made it this far, I'm going to give you the Halloween candy at the end, is that there are really only, you're really talking about two kinds of beer. So two core, two don't, core types. Don't be the guy that walks into the bar and says, I like ales. Because chances are 29 of their 30 beers are ales. So... Know, you know, know that when, when you're walking in and saying ales and lagers that you're talking about the, the larger umbrella side of beer versus the individual things that you might like. You know, the ales are going to be top fermenting, fast fermenting, uh, more flavor intense beers. And lagers are going to be cold fermenting, a little bit more deliberate and a little bit more restrained in the grand scheme of things typically than what an, an, an ale would be. So uh, think about that. Think about the difference between your ales and your lagers and, and when you pick one up and you take a look at the label, you may be able to have a little bit better idea of what you're talking about or, or looking at, which is really the, the, the aim of what we're doing here anyway, not to get you to be able to sit down at the bar and have a ales and lagers dissertation because Win a bet or, it's not, or, or a beer it's or It's not something. fun, but, but yeah. yeah, winning a bet is a lot of fun. That is fun. <laughs> so maybe, maybe we help somebody do that. The whole yeast on top or on the bottom thing is, I didn't know that. Right? I didn't know that. See? All kinds of fun things. I know. I know. Well. This, this is why Russ gives me free beer. That's exactly <laughs> right. With that, sir. Which one? That doesn't one. Doesn't matter. That's right. Text Miss Lily. Cheers to you. We'll see you next time. Very good. Mm -hmm.